live and the world can see us and you'll note yet again I'm, I'm eating fries on here because this is another day where like I had to race over here I didn't have time for lunch or breakfast just uh-huh unacceptable so I for those members and I, I hate eating on the air but for those members who are watching I just scarfed down a Big Mac in record time <laughs> I, I think some of them are very very impressed with how quickly I was able to eat that I think we're gonna have to go back and uh, like really take a gander and, <laughs> and time it as as, uh, as much as we can Ryan what are you doing I'm not doing anything gaff tape <laughs> He's building something. My name is Jamie Higginbotham. I'm joined by Ryan Caton, my McDonald's French fries, and Jared Head. We've also got a Dutta in the control room. Somewhere there's who a button. Also, who also just Hi. raced into this particular show. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for letting us start late. I really appreciate it. And like, oh, yeah, new hair. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Since Ryan's busy taping something, I have no idea what art project is going on over there. Arts and crafts, live, Pro on air. Okay, hey, we're safe, we're safe. All right. <laughs> we're safe. Jared, why don't you get us started? Because I saw you building a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah, I got some really cool stuff that I want to talk about. Because, uh, you know, Rocket Lab wants to go to Venus. That's, like, their thing. Mm. So, which, I mean, that's really cool. Like, a private company actually wanting to go to another planet. Never heard of that before. Um, but they're going to huh. be doing some really really cool stuff cool stuff and things uh with their mission going to venus um and if you've ever seen our tomorrow venus special that i did like two years ago uh you'll know that that about two years ago there was a study put out that said that there was uh a a chemical that was that was detected in the atmosphere of venus something that uh is usually broken down by ultraviolet light from the sun very quickly uh but it was there multiple times in observation which meant that there had to be something there sustaining it it was kind of one of those chemicals where there's where it is made a little bit in nature but not much it's most or at least a little bit in geological processes i should correct that there because i guess life and geology are in nature if you think about it um so yeah. right right they're both they're both nature with that there it's like when you say an organic chicken and you're like aren't they all organic i would hope so uh-huh so you're well, like, not the uh... chicken you're about to eat that's for sure <laughs> they um, damn where well, better be <laughs> it's um, like 100 percent organic i'm like what that just what? means it grows i want to know what like a 70 percent organic chicken would yeah. be yeah. Anyhow, continue. Like yeah. it's it just concerns me sometimes when I see food when I see fast food places advertising. You know, like now with all chicken, and <laughs> you're like, what was it before? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm literally eating fast food as you're saying that. So yes. go, do go go on. Thanks. But I have my salty, sugary good. I just learned that they put sugar on McDonald's fries. Really? Is that is that what makes it so good? Yes. Yes, it is. It's, cool. That's crack. Continue. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, when you when you wake up tomorrow, hopefully you're not having withdrawals. Um, oh, I will be. So, <laughs> so, uh, so this this chemical that was in the atmosphere of Venus, um, it's, it's generated a little bit through geological processes, not much uh, to be to sustain itself uh, even here on Earth. It's usually biological processes, so basically life that ends up making this chemical so there was this big hubbub uh in late 2020 over this paper where they're like they might have discovered biosignatures in the atmosphere of venus uh everybody went and did observations because this is what you do in science somebody puts out a paper and then you basically try to prove them wrong um because it's kind of how it works uh or you end up confirming that they're correct which is also how it works too um and being wrong is just as important as being right in science so it's a it's a good thing to remember that uh and it turns out that nobody could actually really replicate what they were able to do so now everybody's kind of like well was that like was that just in that time period was there something going on so there's kind of this idea that like we should settle this once and for all and the best way to do that is to go and sample in the atmosphere itself uh but you know that kind of takes time right time money resources a lot of stuff that a lot of the people who want to do uh these these kinds of uh missions that they don't have so simply because you know like if you're at a university you're not really going to be raising money to you know fly your own mission or, uh to venus or something like that but rocket lab they are just throwing the money in and making it happen uh with their announced mission that they're going to be doing to venus which is going to be very very exciting uh it's going to be an atmospheric entry probe so they're going to drop a little probe 
probe in the atmosphere of a really great uh, image of it uh, up right here that Rocket Lab themselves put out. Uh, they're basically going to use that, that that extra upper stage that the Electron rocket uses, the, uh, the photon. Uh, they're basically going to make a very high efficiency, high energy photon uh, upper stage to send off. Like me. Yes. Exactly, like you. Indeed, you are the gamma ray of, of this world. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, had, I had to do it. Uh, and they're going to drop it off in the atmosphere and take samples and relay that back. And hopefully we could get a little bit of this mystery solved. Also, what's really okay, nice about they're this... They're just going to go to Venus, mm -hmm, get yes. the sample, and then bring it back. No. No, they're not gonna. It's gonna drop. Oh, you said bring it back. Okay, so no, they're just no, gonna no. bring the data they're, back. Yeah, they're, they're gonna. gonna okay. Excuse me. Yeah, because they're gonna be. Because you the said data bring back. it back, and I'm like, whoa, that's <laughs> so, way harder than the first really, part of what you just mentioned. <laughs> that would be really cool. You actually yeah. could do something like that. You know, you could build a, a probe that could somehow, uh, or a probe with a, enough velocity to go through the atmosphere. You know, open up some scoops while you're in there and grab some air, and then close them up and come through. Well, if it's Venus, you just need like a bucket, right? Yeah, something like that, mm -hmm. you know, but you want like a lot of buckets, <laughs> you know, and you can leave the buckets open for a little bit and then, you know, maybe you open a specific bucket at a specific altitude as well. Mm -hmm. So you get different layers in the atmosphere. What, what um, would that sound like? I don't, uh, <laughs> maybe like that. I don't know, but it, would it, would it, I, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been in a spaceship coming through an atmosphere. So, um, internet via text. I want you to <laughs> <laughs> please give us your best automatopia for what you think. What you think it would sound like. Put it in the chat room now. Put it in the comments <laughs> below. I'm curious what you think that would oh, sound like. Oh, man. That's so great. I love it. Uh, but, yeah, so Rocket Lab working on this uh, ex this really cool design that's just going to fit inside of their Electron. Uh, there we go. Psh should, should I just attempt to mm -hmm. do all these automatopias? Okay, cool. Absolutely. Uh, I so think you have to. Um, just uh, you know, it's really cool about the the uh, uh, atmosphere s sampling scraper. I don't know what to call it, but the atmospheric bucket. There you go. That's what I got for that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dada. You guys are making this really easy on me here. I'm no I'm no Michael Winslow, but I'll keep giving it a shot um, with this here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, but you, this is why you're members of tomorrow to watch me eat <laughs> fries and listen to Jared make noises. Th this is what it's, it's you're all, welcome. It's all about the mouth noises. Yeah, as it is. Say. It's ASMR. Well, this is like the world's worst ASMR. <laughs> well, you've always said is. video is eighty percent audio. I, I so do. Yes, we're, exactly. we're living up to that that, mm, that, right. that thing right there. Was that brrrr? <laughs> that's, I, I, I think that, 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 that's the sound an A10 makes. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, wait a second. I think if it's making that noise, something's wrong with yeah, the vehicle. I don't have a Gao 8 handy at the moment. <laughs> there you go. That's bigger than my Jeep. What is that? Merp, hold, merp, no, hold merp, on. I missed merp. it. A slurp? Uh, uh, Allison says this derailed fast as usual. You're welcome. Wait, bring the, bring the one before the slurp back. I needed to see it. I didn't catch it, so... Yeah, so I was going to say real quick before we derailed into the automatopia thing here, which is that the atmospheric scoop probe, oh my gosh. which makes this noise. <laughs> um, the atmospheric probe scoop was is actually an idea that his uh, that was a part of the Mars sample return mission that they first designed in the '90s. In case you're wondering, so they thought about doing it that way. Um, oh, you got to bring that one back up. I saw a W A. I'm trying here. Um, yeah, well, I, I, oh, here I ain't got the chat for me. So there you go. Sorry. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> a nuclear ramjet. A oh, nuclear ramjet? Oh no, we can't do that. That was a bad idea in the '60s, and it's a bad idea now. Um, so this is gonna be super exciting because. The uh, <laughs> 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 I don't know what click or I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is so exciting because like we haven't actually had a mission go into the atmosphere of Venus since the eighties. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It, I mean, the atmosphere is thick, but it's not that thick on Venus. You know what I mean? <laughs> so boom. Oh well, no! Um, I like that. Oh, wait, I thought it was. Th I thought you could like put a boat on it. I thought it would act like. Um. Like you could, it was thick enough where you could. 
like n if you didn't land, if you you could just like put a ship on top, of, like a sail ship on top of it. Well, the the yeah, that a um, the like you know lifting gases on Venus, you don't necessarily have to use like helium or hydrogen. Um, you can use you could use other things um, with that because the atmosphere is so thick. So. Okay. So it's not like you have options. Like obviously helium is a really great lifting gas. You would prefer to use something like that, but you have some options because of the density of Venus's atmosphere. Which for those of you wondering, um, Venus's atmosphere, how dense is it? Uh, it's like it's it's about uh, ninety times the atmospheric pressure of the Earth at the surface. Uh, so you will you will die. Um, it if says, you're imagine there. someone joining the stream now and Jared just stops to make a random noise. Yeah. I was, it's, hey, it's what you all want. It's, uh, just, it's Tourette's Awareness Day. I, I, <laughs> I am giving the people what they want. So, and if and the people are very quickly That's the noise. Out. <laughs> That's <laughs> the noise, Dada. So, this one? <laughs> I destroyed this show in the first like five minutes. Keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep thinking like maybe an empty soda like my soda thing over there when it gets empty you know so I was, what the hell I'm gonna go ahead and do it on air anyhow so let's go chug it so that's what you're sampling the that's Venus's the Venus that's the Venus sample sound <laughs> <laughs> okay. anyways now that we're complete like absolutely like what there are no rails at this point um, oh, yeah. I'm just amazed that this thing is so tiny, you know, because um, like if you look at what the Soviets flew to the surface of oh, Venus, wow, that the Veneras, is, that, that is tiny. Those things were huge, you know. They're like tanks. Mm -hmm. and they had, you know, they really actually did have a form of tank armor on them, and they like the longest of them lasted about two hours. Yeah, I was gonna say they the didn't. They didn't last very long when they made it. No, it's really hard uh, to make things work on Venus. Um, at least Venus's surface. Uh, Venus's atmosphere is really interesting that at the area where it's about one atmospheric pressure compared to Earth, you have about room temperature there. So at about, you know, 20, 25 degrees Celsius. Um, but you plop down into the surface of Venus and we're at 400 Celsius or higher. Um, and all the time, too. So uh, because of, of the huge amount of carbon dioxide at Venus. And actually, that's one of the reasons why we really want to study Venus is because it has that c almost all carbon dioxide atmosphere. And it's a really great example of what's called the runaway greenhouse effect, which you you know you have a lot of carbon dioxide, it absorbs the energy from the sun, it gets hot, which generates, which may potentially generate more carbon dioxide or or something like that in whatever environment you have, and then your temperature just starts going up and up and up and up, and it becomes like this feedback loop. Um, one of the things about the Earth is that we don't have enough carbon dioxide, even if we freed up all the carbon dioxide here uh, to end up with an atmosphere like Venus's. Um, but we like to look at Venus as sort of like a really great La like a planet-sized laboratory for catastrophic climactic change. So it's really, it actually is really important to study Venus if we want to look at what we're doing here on Earth because, you know, the stuff that went incredibly wrong on Venus is what we are doing uh, to the Earth right now. Um, we won't get to that point because there's a lot of factors at Venus that are different. It's closer to the sun, other things like that. Um, it may have had less water than the Earth does. You know, we're kind of we're still working to figure all that out. Uh, but you know, that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. But it's not just this mission coming up. I, you know, I just want to remind everybody: there's other missions like the European Space Agency. They're coming up with their Envision spacecraft. They got a big old radar, synthetic aperture radar, at the top of it right there. And you need that because the clouds. That, Venus are so thick you can't really see through them. You can use filters for specific wavelengths of light to be able to see through them a little bit, but in order to get what we call this thing called good resolution of the surface, you actually have to do radar with it and you know, bounce the radar and receive it back, and that's that's kind of how you figure that out. Um, also, uh, going to do that with a mission called Veritas, which is being done by JPL. It here. looks like it's going to walk up and hug you. Yeah, it doesn't it? It's, right? it's, a, it's, very, like, it's, like, it's a very nice friendly Aww. probe with it. <laughs> um, Maybe we can just send you to Venus instead, Jamie. <laughs> and then we've got uh, DaVinci Plus, which is going to be a... I thought that was editing software. Uh, you know, it is. And it's it's what we use here tomorrow, right? DaVinci Studio. So DaVinci, yeah. And... Uh, 
flight this is a <clears throat> this is an atmospheric probe uh that will drop down to the surface it's designed to make it to the surface and it's gonna have a camera so i'm really excited because we won't have to uh, rely on the images from 1980s Soviet cameras anymore. We could actually maybe get some nice high-resolution stuff. Um, and again, that atmospheric probe going to go through atmospheric entry and then drop its heat shield and, and take uh, samples all the way down, including a mass spectrometer, which means we're going to figure out precisely what things are, what the air and atmosphere and maybe even the little bit of the surface is made of when we land there. Uh, but of course, you know, back in the day, we had the Venera uh, si series. Uh, that took images on the surface of Venus. The United States also had its own missions uh, in the late 70s called Pioneer Venus, which dropped four probes to, the, to uh, uh, Venus's atmosphere. They weren't expected to survive to the surface. They all did, and they transmitted for a little bit. Uh, but Venera was specifically designed to actually work on the surface and take images um and they were kind of hit or miss <laughs> scott scott that's very true <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a pro for a little bit i don't know if there's a specified time in what they're expecting da vinci plus to actually operate um but i know i've heard hours so well da vinci works in time code that's true. It also <laughs> so well, what, how do you want the data? 24, 30, 60? Like, come on, let's figure this out. Um, and then 59, uh, obviously. What's up? 59. Oh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> And uh, this was just, a, I thought, a really great render of what the Venera probe sitting on the surface of Venus would look like. I really, oh, it would be so cool to actually be able to get something to land right by the Venera probes because I would love to see... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luffy. Because <laughs> uh, I, I would just love to see what has happened to these things as they've been sitting in, in on the surface, um, you know, cooking for decades. Uh, it's got to be absolutely amazing to see them. So just, you know, some more, some more looks at Venus here. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. again, Soviet cameras, so not the highest resolution that we could possibly have. But I always love this one, which is this really nice, uh, really nice view of the surface of Venus there with the Venera probe, uh, from the Venera probe, and you can see it's just kind of this, this volcanic flat area, so a whole bunch of basaltic rocks, so what we would expect from lava, you know, flowing and hardening over very long periods of time, so uh, overall, just a really cool place, and I'm really happy that there's a lot of missions that are happening, and I'm extremely happy that there's, you know, missions on the way, like, next year with... Uh, Rocket Labs Venus mission, Venus mission. So, uh, a long time coming with this, uh, with for Venus. So, yeah, and a lot concurrently. It sounds like yes, like a long time coming, all, and then like everything at the same time. All of a sudden, <laughs> like, yeah. All of a sudden, everybody cares about Venus. Well, so. uh, it's not. So that's a weird illusion that happens in aerospace, right? It's not really all of a sudden. It's more like it takes a while for people to kind of spin up. And so these ideas form and then people are like, oh, that's a really good idea. And then multiple agencies or companies start working on that idea, th the core idea. But then it takes a very long time for these things to actually come to fruition. So then it feels like all of a sudden you've got all of these different options mm -hmm. when in reality, like it, to, the, a lot of this has been worked on for a while. I would say... Maybe not the laboratory stuff. I would like, say to a point with that, um, so the last mission the United States sent to Venus was Magellan, which was um, essentially a Franken probe where they basically took a whole bunch of spares that they had laying around at JPL, uh, which I do talk about in the... Uh, Venus special video so if you want to know more about the history of exploring Venus go do that because I spent like 15 minutes covering it and it was so cool uh, that they literally just took like spares from Voyager, Mariner, and Galileo and threw it together and were like a probe um, <laughs> and, <Huzzah! laughs> hey um, so that was our last mission to it and that was that was you know the early 90s when it was there at Venus so it's been a long time and it's not like nobody has proposed you know, like nobody's interested in going back. There's been constant proposals to get missions to go to Venus. It's just that there's this other planet a little bit further out than Earth called Mars that seems to get the lion's share of missions. <laughs> so, well, it feels like, I mean, yeah. there's a reason for that, right? Yes. I, I, I would argue, like, well, for me personally, it's Moon first, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I yeah. think I think the Moon is more inspiring than Mars because you can walk outside, look at it, up at it, and be like, yeah. and think to yourself. Oh wow, there are humans on that, and then getting people to walk outside, look up, and look at Mars or Venus or any other planet—a little more challenging, right? Yes. Like, 
I have to like actually describe to them where that planet is. So yeah, absolutely. But there is something pretty awesome about Mars because we can send humans there to actually <laughs> stay star star. Star right. star, it's gonna <laughs> suck. Yeah, it, it's gonna. T- <laughs> but it's like it's possible. It you know you can send humans to Venus. I'm not sure how long they would. St- I mean, I guess it would stay forever. <laughs> <laughs> You're not <laughs> right. Put them in a blimp. Not, <laughs> not sure how Basically. long you get data back from them. Mm, exactly. Well, I w- You're not sending people to the surface. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> please like, don't. Uh, please don't. <laughs> so it makes it be- because we are empathetic creatures and and we want to see things that we can kind of empathize with or relate with. That makes the moon and Mars easier than Venus. Yes. Because of that exact reason, we are because we are human centric. Also, like, think about the amount of photos that we have of the surface of Venus. Like, that was it, you know? Sure. Like, it's just such a small amount, you know? It's from, it's just, you know, ba- barely basic panoramas from these things that have just sat there for, they just sit there, and that's what they've done. So, you know, it's not like InSight. Even though InSight sits there as a lander, it still has a camera at the end of its of its arms so it can maneuver that around and take a different look at its environment while these are just kind of static also they're from a very long time ago um so yeah it's and and then also another problem of venus is that if you want to study it at the surface that is an incredible engineering challenge that you have to overcome um and essentially most of the missions were shot down because of the fact that they wanted to have a surface surface element and they said no because it's just not gonna like we don't have the technology at the moment for it to work so, so it's I, is, I, is that because women are not in control of determining missions, or they don't want us to see? What's up? Women are from Venus, men are from Mars. Oh, okay, gotcha. That, that <coughs> do, right over my uh, head. We're gonna give you so. that one, but next time do better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <Dad. laughs> Thanks. So yeah, that's that, that was very helpful. <laughs> the discussion. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> Just asking questions, asking the tough questions. Yeah, that's oh, true. the tough questions. The tough exactly. Questions, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So, oh my God, Venus. So I just thought Venus is so cool, and it's just been—it's like the redheaded stepchild of the solar system. Everybody looks at it and goes, "Hmm." So, but now everybody. No, but that now, would be no. That would be Pluto. So <laughs> no, we love Pluto. Pluto is like that plucky little kid that's getting beat on by the bullies, and then all of a sudden one day everybody at the school is like, "Screw that! We're going after the bullies." So we, we and then there's like a huge fight. So that's right, IAU at the next conference, you're gonna find me. The, uh, wait, I want to do this like a WWE promo. Yes. That's right. Yes. I you at the next conference. You better show up. You better be ready. Jared, they don't laugh We're during a W. Go. They don't laugh in a WWE it's promo. The cream rises to the top, or no, it's the frozen nitrogen from the cryovolcano rises to the top. Anyways, I blew it. So, um, but whatever, it's good. So, um, and we, I, and we, I just we can't. have we have more imagery of the surface of Pluto than we do of Venus. Yeah, if you think honestly, you know what? I think that, yeah, we this do. W- this would be fun. We each need to do a <laughs> WWE promo style. <laughs> But for each planet, right? <laughs> like so, like you, you can be Venus. I'll be the Moon, which I realize is not a planet. I look forward to your letters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please leave your comments below so we won't read them. Awesome, right? But like, and then and then we'll we'll like create fake like battles between the p- planets, right? Just <laughs> yeah, it's like epic rap rap. Blah, blah, blah. It's like epic rap battles of history, except it's a it's the planet. It's the planet, yeah. Planet. But in WWE so. style. But, so I but like, like those angry like. The those angry like they're all like i think that would be we're gonna fun. have to figure out that bracket because if you want the moon included with the nine planets nine planets um <laughs> you could also you could also do, t- do some moons of, uh, of other planets if you wanted to yeah we could do that too so some of them are big like ganymede is, is you know huge so it's titan Car- carrie will take enceladus so. So okay, cool, that's, cool. That's Sounds fair. good. Yeah, sounds good. I'm all for it. So, so you, I yeah. know you were excited about Venus, but the chat room, you know, going way back, uh, Jack basically, and I actually have this in a social comment full screen. Uh, Jack is uh, holding a fancy camera rented for remote video right now. One may ask why, and it's because Artemis. Yes. Right. Everyone's getting excited. That was the conversation earlier in the chat room with regards to Artemis. So I'm going to go around the room one more time and just ask, what do we think? Do we, are we still thinking? Okay. Dada, I think we're done with that now. Thank you. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, was, I was waiting to see where you were going to go. I, I, I was done with that. I was Planet done with that. Nine? They haven't found it yet. <laughs> um, what are we thinking? Are we thinking, uh, we st- how, how are we feeling about the end of the month? Because uh, Space Launch System, she's on the pad, right? So, yeah. Jared, I'll start with you. Uh, their their first target date is still the 29th. Is I that a true think, statement? Yeah, I th- <laughs> what, what do you, oh, is that a live, are you really pointing at your oh, wow. not green Look screen? Look at Ryan. Mm-hmm. Ryan's showing off uh, the big the uh, orange rocket there. I've had, I've had to uh, crank the uh, uh, contrast up quite significantly because uh, <laughs> NASA doesn't understand exposure at nighttime. So uh, I w- it's, uh, it doesn't look too good okay, at hang, night, hang uh, no, but th- it looks I, better in the day. I, I, uh, as someone who has had to try to expose cameras for very giant objects on the pad, let me tell you, this is a much harder problem to solve than you may think. Anyhow, I know, but because I'm not experienced in the industry, I can make any comment I like. So how, how true that is! How true that is! <laughs> uh, all right, actually, Ryan, why, why don't we start with you? Uh, the 29th. What do you think? Yes or no? Uh, um, I'm gonna say just a safe bet. 29th, no. But in the in the other two, uh, which is like the second and the sixth of September, I think probably yes. Just because they didn't. Ooh. My only thinking for that is. They didn't fully complete the wet dress last time, even though they said it was okay. They had to take data from old tests to say it was okay. So <laughs> I think they're still going to get a hiccup on the 29th, but on the 3rd or the 6th, I think they'll launch on one of them dates, even though I want it to be the 29th. All right. In you- my my heart wants it to be the 29th. My head thinks otherwise. I mean, in all of our hearts, we want it to be the 29th, right? Like, who doesn't want it to be? I want it to yeah. be tomorrow. Like, hey, I want to... Happy birthday to me. Wait, wait, hang on. Oh, am that's I, right. Am I s- slated to be? I'll be in the middle of vacation. I don't want to have to get up at five, mm-hmm. five in the morning in order to watch it in the middle of my vacation. The 29th, I will be. NASA, work around my schedule. <sighs> I will not be at the Cape on the 29th. But I will be at the Cape the following week. So I really want them to go. When is their next one? <laughs> the, the sixth? Third and sixth, I think. The third? third? And sixth, something like that. <laughs> I will be there on the sixth. So, <laughs> dear NASA, all right, Jared, what do you think? Um, I think, what did I say before? I think I said the second or third window, or the second or third window, which would be for September, the first and second window in September. That's right, second and third window, first and second. Um, so I still, I still stand by that. It's probably, I, I feel like Ryan is is spot on with the fact that they have not. I mean, I'm just outright saying it. They haven't done everything in what they need to do. They admitted to do it. They admitted to that. Um, so I think that they're going to get you know some more surprises uh, during that, and and we'll see how that goes. Dada. So, what do you think? That's my birthday. I'm I'm gonna go for the 29th. <laughs> oh, all right, going for the 29th. Happy birthday to me. Yeah. All right, and chat in the comments below. What do you think? Um, <laughs> I think everyone's going to pretty much agree with that assessment, but here's a better one, and I like this. This is from Tony, and Tony asks, bets on if Space Launch System will have to roll back or not, right? Because let's remember, to Ryan's point, and basically everyone's point, we they did not get their countdowns down to zero. No. Right? There nope. could still still be valid Well, I hope that they, they weren't meant to, because if they did, then no, well, something okay. would have gone horribly wrong. Fair, but but they didn't get their. We countdowns. know what you mean. We know what you mean. Right. I look forward to your letters. I <laughs> like. Do you think that? Do you think they'll have to roll the vehicle back, or do you think they'll actually be able to leave it at the pad and lift off? So do you, De- depends on the ground um- umbilical carrier plate. <laughs> he says bitterly. <laughs> Bitter? No. no. Uh, <laughs> There's no salt in that wound at all. No, doesn't sound like it. Uh, so. so, Ryan, what do you think? Do you think that they'll be able to launch, or do you think that they'll run into an issue that will require rollback? Um, I really want it to go, so I don't want to jinx anything. Um, possibly. Fifty-fifty. <laughs> 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 I'm neither saying mm. yes nor no. Mm. No, that's cheating. You got to pick one. Okay. It, um. Um. No, no, which, no, because then it will. So yes, so then it won't. <laughs> Wait, which is it? Which is it? I'm gonna say yes, so it doesn't. All right, he's saying yes. It has to roll back. Jared, what do you think? Do you think they'll have an issue that will require them to roll back? Oh, I hope not. I really hope they don't. Um, but I feel like if they have an issue and they're gonna leave, uh, 
Artemis one on the pad. They, I, I mean, we're getting into hurricane season mm. on the Gulf Coast, mm. so that's that's kind of one of my concerns about if there are delays. You know, is that you could have a, a hurricane come through the area and kind of I don't want to say mess things up, but I mean, if a hurricane comes, they've got to put it back in the VAB because you don't leave that out in the middle of a hurricane, right? I mean, I, you know, I would hope if, we don't. If, if only they had some sort of if only they had some sort of structure that would be like be able to like <laughs> rotate it around it so that they could service it. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, no, I don't think they're going to have to roll it back. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go with no. I don't think they're going to have to roll right, it back. Jared, they could fix it at the pad. Jared, they fixed Apollo 11 at the pad, so they could fix SLS at the pad. Well, that brings up another interesting question. But before we get there, Dutta, what do you think? Do you think they will have to roll back, or do you think it will launch? I, it depends on that ground umbil umbilical carrier. Okay, but. but that's not an answer. So what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so I hey, I made Ryan answer. I'm making you answer. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no, and and I'm I'm if they do, they're gonna I think they're gonna have issues with recertifying boosters and all that stuff too mm. yeah I, I actually think they got far enough I, I actually think they are going to launch um, I'm not sure I, I'm with everyone on the maybe not the first time right because there's a lot of countdown for them to get through yeah uh, there's a lot it's a brand new rocket right that's just what happens with brand new rockets brand new things yep um, even though they did a wet dress like y you still have more issues to uncover yes having said that though I really do think that uh, th I it feels like they've uncovered most of the GSC the ground support equipment issues um, that it's in a pretty decent place so I actually think there is a I, actually no you know what I'm going to take that back I think uh, barring weather I think the vehicle will be ready for its first launch attempt how's that I actually think they've worked through most of their issues. You think it's going to go on I, the first I, shot? I think it's going to go on the first shot. Nice. Yeah. Like first shot even in that daily window? Well, the or window will be dictated. The window? They, can they recycle once they begin fuel? Load? I don't I I actually don't know. I um I don't know what the recycle is for the space launch. System. So, I'm 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 not going to really Do they rely on subcooling? So I'm not going to comment on the window itself. So I, I think it will go inside of that window, but that window is dictated by weather and by a lo bunch of factors. And and I'm I'm really not speaking to weather at this point because mm -hmm. that's so dynamic in Florida. Yeah, I am only speaking to the vehicle that the vehicle is ready and the launch control centers are ready. So I actually do think I I don't know my spidey sensors are basically saying like they they've got a lot of data on this particular vehicle. They've got a ton of data, and it just it feels. I don't know. It feels like they're ready. So I hope so. I, w I, w I do too. I mean, right. like ultimately, I, no one on the show is opposed to wanting to see this thing fly. Like, like this is going to be a spectacular launch if it goes off correctly. So because again, first flight of a new vehicle, like there's a ton of unknowns and other things like that. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> our avail. That's a very good point. Once the SRBs are lit, we are going, baby. So that's right. well, maybe that's Hashtag what we need. send it. Maybe someone just needs to walk up under it with like a big lighter and just like commit that thing to space. Yeah. Just I see. You know, people. People in the chat room are saying even if it doesn't go correctly, it'll be spectacular. Like if I you just, think if you think the fireworks in the air are going to be big, wait till you see the congressional hearings after that. They're going to be even more okay. at that. So. I just that doesn't feel like at its core, space launch system is big but simple, right? Like there's a lot of knowns yeah, in the space all, launch it, system. It's all '70s technology. Yeah, that's not what I mean though. Like I just I feel like. It's a very powerful but not overly complicated vehicle. Yeah, we've used like, you, we've used those engines a hundred times. We have, like the yeah, yeah, literally. So Excellent. we we <laughs> we have really good understanding of m most of this particular vehicle. I it doesn't feel to me like I now obviously there's this is space flight right. There's always a chance something will go, but it really doesn't feel like we're gonna like once they once they light those solids. I'm it's going. Yeah, it's going. Like I. Going somewhere. It's going whether, somewhere. Whether whether, whether whether it goes somewhere intentionally, that's uh, that's still to be decided. Yeah. Anyhow, that's that's my thought. That's my thought on all of that. What do you guys think in the comments section? I love the comments below. Like, um, do you think it'll go on the first attempt? Do you think it's going to go? Do you think they're going to have to roll it back? Um, what do you think is going to happen during the flight itself? All kind of kind of fun to speculate. Will um, will the ground umbilical carrier plate seal? Okay, now that is one thing. So, like, legitimately, containing liquid hydrogen is hard. 
It just hydrogen yeah. does doth not want to be contained. It's an itty bitty it's, atom. It's itty bitty teeny weeny, and yeah. it's like I want out. Itty bitty atom, itty bitty molecule. You can't tell me where to go. So yeah. So your walls mean nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mere mortals, <laughs> you will not contain me. No, it'd be really cool when it goes. Yes, I, I'm, I'm really excited for that. Me too. I I like computer animation is great and everything, but nothing beats the real deal. Nothing beats real. So. I really want. I selfishly I wanted to go on the sixth. Because <laughs> I want to be there, <laughs> right? Yeah, and of I, course, I already have. <clears throat> excuse me, I already have base access, so I'll just go on base and like experience those solids. Because that—that's the thing I miss from the space shuttle program, right, Dada? The sound of the <laughs> solids, right? <laughs> Wasn't that amazing when you saw that space shuttle fly? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, but I, I, I'm genuinely <laughs> wondering if I can take a trip for my birthday. You should. I think you should. My wife would kill me. Oh, do it anyhow. I think you should. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I there's nothing quite like the sound and feeling of a solid lifting a vehicle. And yeah, the Atlas has them. It's not the same. It's not the same as shuttle. Like there was just it's still loud. It was just yeah, Atlas is loud. I, well, Atlas with solids is that. It, it's almost like when you've got a solid, it's almost like it's tearing the air it's, itself. Yeah, it's yeah. breaking physics. It's it, yeah, it's breaking all of the things. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's fun to watch. Yeah, I've seen you know, I've seen two uh, uh, five four one configuration Atlas fives out of Vandenberg, and that was that was very loud, especially because at Vandenberg you're like two and a half miles away from the Atlas pad out on Ocean Avenue. So like that is really close and really loud. I think my favorite Atlas is like a four one one. <laughs> oh, Cause, the power cause, slide. Cause, yeah, because it's just like, it's got that one boost, it's got that one mm -hmm. solid on the side, and you're just like, yeah, that they, looks funny. They invented power sliding, <laughs> and then Astra perfected it with their rocket coming off. The <laughs> Sick. Uh, all right, Ryan, now that you're done taping things up, what were you excited about this week? Uh, I was also excited about SLS, and I just wanted to show some. Well, uh, that's not English. I, I just wanted to show some. <laughs> B-roll. It's your language. We, use, we stole use. the language from yeah, you. I know. I know. So, um... We didn't this, steal yeah, it. We, is, we liberated the language. You can... There we go. Oh, it's very pretty. Yeah. So, um... I... I... Uh, that is pretty much all I had to talk about. Unless you want to talk about the, uh... uh epic speculation I was very proud of from the news. Oh, no. I missed it. Because I actually... I didn't get to see your news this week. Hey, me! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't actually you, even... You can catch it on YouTube, actually. <laughs> is, there a, <laughs> is there a channel I can go to, Dada, where yeah, I can see his news? Is there somewhere I can YouTube. go? It's youtube.com slash TMR. Okay, hang on. What's the epic spec... I just boob hit the microphone. What's the ep epic speculation? <laughs> What's the epic speculation, Ryan? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll get to it once we've seen the pretty pictures. Oh oh, we're just, watching the pretty pictures. I got I, it. Yeah, I gotta yeah. say we, we have to watch pictures. them in silence. That I got it. I got it. We'll watch in silence. Did you not have voiceover for the pretty oh, pictures? Come no, on. no, we watch in silence. This is what we're doing now. We're watching. No, in silence. I can't. Hang on, hang on, this is the on, only internet show where we decide to watch B-roll in silence. That is such a beautiful rocket in fuzzy blurry. Is, is it, oh God. Okay, here we go. Oh, now you've done it. Now I can now I can turn the noise on so you can hear it. I know gonna, the algorithm. Are we getting a copyright strike? It's public domain, we're fine. Oh no, some company is definitely going to copyright strike us for all these background noises. Yep, there's tracks. I want to drive that. Me too. Looks like it'd be funny. Me three. But I want to drive it with the rocket on top. I just want to take it like around the road for a little spin, you know. I work with a couple of people who have ridden on the pad to the pad. They said it's fantastically exciting for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. And the other 12 of your shift, you're just bored. Are you kidding me? I'd be doing backflips. Right next to the thing, all the way to the pad. Eight. At the 300-foot level? Actually, yep. I, was, I was wondering the same thing, and I don't know if anyone knows this, but uh, Nathan asks, what do the wheel spinny things at the bat, back bit of it do? Those are brakes. They're brakes? Why are they spinning? Because the motors are turning the, the tracks. It's like a disc rotor, and the two blue things are brake like calipers. That's cool. So look at the reduction from where the 
the, the shaft that the brakes are on to compared to what the crawler is doing. Oh, I see. So those are literally just... That's to stop it. Giant disc brakes. Yes. Huh. It's wild. Nathan says that's inter it's interesting, so thank you. Are we done watching in silence, Ryan? Uh, no, the video's just silent. They went okay. outside as well. I don't know if you noticed, but they rolled the rocket outside. Whoa. There it is. Wow, look at how how beautifully exposed it is in that shot. <laughs> That's some real professionals working there. Are those still xenon, or are they doing like really bright LEDs? Now? I think they're doing really bright LEDs now. Nice. I'd like one of those for my room. If they were still xenon, then people would not. Be I was just gonna say they wouldn't be there without close. any sort of protection. Yeah, exactly. The big old fire suits. Hey, who turned the lights off? <laughs> zap fan, zap fan, same for her the Jawas. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day that said said something along, along the lines of, I didn't know that uh, driving the, the water truck in front of the crawler way was a, was a career opportunity. <laughs> Actually, Arrowvale, I do agree. It does look like a moon rocket. Yeah. I think that's kind of intentional. I know. I th I I think they just grab parts that they had from shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wasn't that the intent? <laughs> Lights are off, so that's a let's can nap. <laughs> there's no there's no like towel they can throw over it to right. make it think it's Ryan. What what was your speculation or what, what were you talking about? In, well, because you haven't watched the news segment, you're not going to make me I watch think the, the news context. Segment. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think it's important, very He's important for context Ryan's that we all watch the news segment. What have Ryan I done? Ince Inception video watching with Ryan. Kim. I'm gonna oh forget God. a bit Maybe if I if I don't are if we I don't do this. End up copyright striking or our, we're gonna yeah we have issued a copyright <laughs> strike on ourselves. <laughs> I don't know that we get your audio though, Ryan. You know, we're about to find out. Oh no, we must have because we were out. hearing your yeah. the engine noises yeah. and whatnot. Okay. All right, so all right, let's watch space news together. Antares right. is Northrop Grumman's workhorse rocket, uh, delivering weird. their Cygnus spacecraft to the International Space Station about every six months, providing vital cargo resupplies for the crew, as well as providing a bin lorry service. Without an expendable resupply vessel, any rubbish would need to be sent back to Earth, taking away available mass for return that could be used with science experiments or more important items. I'm going to watch the whole that thing. That last part is important, yep. as when Russia started their invasion of Ukraine back in February, pretty much all links with the Western aerospace industry were severed, excluding those which are extremely important to keep intact, such as the ISS. <laughs> the current generation of Antares, the 230 Plus, uses two Russian RD-181 engines and its first stage is manufactured in Ukraine. Northrop Grumman, however, may have just found the solution to this political problem. Firefly Aerospace is joining forces with Northrop Grumman to manufacture a brand new first stage for their next generation of Antares, the 300 series. The first of this series will be the Antares 330, designed as a direct replacement for 230 plus Cygnus operations. Following this will be a, and I quote, entirely new medium class launch vehicle. To power these vehicles, Firefly will be providing seven of its Miranda engines, which use the same propellants as the current first stage, RP-1 and liquid oxygen, meaning the launch pad upgrades can be kept to a minimum. Whilst you're looking at another piece of concept art from Firefly, I'll tell you about Beta. That was the name for Firefly's next rocket after Alpha, however on their website it has mysteriously been renamed to the initialism MLV. It's time for me to dive into a chasm of speculation because I think I might have sussed something out. The MLV is also powered by seven of their Miranda engines, the same as Antares 330. The diameter of the MLV is 4.32 meters, however, Northrop Grumman haven't released an official diameter of Antares 330, but it doesn't mean we can't work it out. Instead, if we look at 230 Plus, which has the same size second stage, it has a diameter of 3.9 meters. 
Now, looking at this concept art again, I measured the width of the second stage in this image to be 327 pixels. I divided that by the real world width, 3.9, multiplied the result of that by 4.32, the diameter of MLV. The result of that calculation was 362.2 pixels, which I plugged into Photoshop, and it was the exact width of the 330s concept first stage. Coincidence? I think not. Oh, and the stubby bits of the raceway line up exactly. And for the biggest <laughs> whopper of all, let's reanalyze the quote. Entirely new medium class launch vehicle. This means a separate vehicle, not another Antares. What could MLV stand for? Medium launch vehicle. It was in there the entire time and I'm willing to bet money that Firefly's next rocket will be developed by them and Northrop Grumman. Antares 330 must be using MLV's first stage or Firefly is pulling an epic prank. If Antares 330 and Firefly's MLV are going to be sharing a first stage then theoretically with the correct adaptations Firefly could operate out of Northrop Grumman's launch pad 0B at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, adding onto their active alpha pad at Vandenberg. Did you find and the tracking what? feature in After Effects? pad 0A is already in their alpha's user's manual, alongside Slick 20 at the Cape. If Firefly will have an alpha facility at Wallops, why would they not integrate an MLV facility too? Another point to consider is what will happen to Rocket Lab's neutron pad. I believe that was supposed to fly from 0B also, but that depends on Northrop, Firefly and Rocket Lab playing nice, who, by the way, will be medium lift competitors at that point. I will be clear again, however, that that is entirely speculation. There has been no official data and I might be entirely wrong. I do have a feeling though that this is way too big a coincidence for it to be incorrect. Watch this space though, because if I am right, I'm almost definitely going to be bragging about it. <laughs> yes, I will. Nice. I will. Oh no, you should. You absolutely yeah. should. Also, yes. I think, uh, I, first off, uh, you did find the new tracking feature in After Effects, right? That's what that, you, you were like, like that's no, what was going on. No, this is Google Earth Studio. Oh, I right. can export tracking data from there. All right, I was just curious. I was just curious. Uh, <clears throat> So actually, I think all of that sounded quite reasonable yeah. and nerdy mm. at the same time. Like you sat there and counted yeah. pixels. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, I, I think that all makes sense. Although I'm, my question now for for the room and the chat room is, is Northrop Grumman about to find out the same thing that ULA found out when you contract with a new space company with regards to timelines? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I can tell you the difference between uh, ULA and Northrop Grumman is that at least there's hardware, and at least the hardware has flown with Firefly. So, no. right? Because their alpha's flown once, and then it like <laughs> it flew for two minutes, and then it I became mean, a lot. That of was moves. also technically a suborbital hop. <laughs> also, that was unintentionally, but it was. Hang on, with ULA, uh, you know, contracting with Blue, Blue had technically flown as well. They just didn't fly any of the stuff that Blue had purchased, <laughs> or, or uh, excuse me, that ULA had purchased, and that's it's going to be the same thing here. I don't. I mean, Blue hasn't, fl no, Blue hasn't flown the launch vehicle with the BE4 on it. That's what I'm so saying. They like th they haven't. Flyer, fi fi Blue, Firefly has right. Not th not this part of this stage. Oh, it's different. No, it's oh. different. No. Oh, okay. So Never. that's I mean you're, you're. I will sit over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so that's like saying, uh, hey, Blue flew. <laughs> What is it? New New Glenn made a boo boo. He made boo boo. <laughs> You're in timeout. Do we have like a okay? Like need I'm a going hat. to timeout. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I said a dumb thing. Which? Oops. Uh, uh oh. So it's Friday. Gotcha. Okay. I I <clears throat> Loopy. Thank you. I popped over to the main chat. Thank you. We'll pop that out. Great. Uh. So all right. I I think that was actually quite well done and i'm sad that i missed your live or your uh, news episode ryan i think that's mm -hmm. br i love that you did some speculation and some stuff back there and i am excited for mm -hmm. you to be right so that you can brag and it's going to be amazing <laughs> it's going to yeah. be amazing when you do 
Uh, Jared, you're popping more stuff up. Did you have another story? I've got two more, actually. Oh, we whoa. Okay, well, it. oh, yeah, no, what? Uh, I mean, if they're exciting. I mean, if they're astronomy, maybe not. Yeah, well, I mean, space <laughs> <laughs> I've got a robotic probe <laughs> that was in trouble, and now it does not appear. Well, it w- wasn't really in trouble, but it, it had a little bit of a ding. And now they've worked on it. They've troubleshooted it. For, uh, troubleshot it. Troubleshooted? I don't know. You're in the tech. Trouble chat. Trouble chat. <laughs> they trouble chat it. <laughs> trouble. Uh, I'm not going to that, say that's that. Gonna, that's what's going to happen to me after my di- uh, I scarf my dinner down today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to trouble chat just that. Just don't trouble chart. Um, anyways, uh, boy, that one just threw me off a lot. Um, but they had, to, they had to fix a probe that was very far away. Uh, in fact, that would be the Lucy probe, which is uh, on its way to visit several Trojan asteroids in our solar system. They had a problem with one of the solar panels. It didn't open all the way. And these are those ultraflex solar panels, very you know, kind of similar to the ones that fly on Northrop Grumman Cygnus. Um, but they still are... But they're very much a lot bigger uh, than those. Uh, so here's Lucy, you know, in its stowed configuration for when it was launched um, on an Atlas V. And then here it is, just to give you sort of like a size comparison as to how big those are. Much, much bigger than the Cygnus solar panels because Lucy is going out to the orbit of Jupiter. So it needs gigantic solar panels. Do you see the human for scale? Yeah. Okay, so if you ever get a tour of SpaceX... Mm-hmm. In the main entryway of the tour hallway, there are giant posters yeah. that are like, you know, Falcon 1, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, um, like BFR, um, um, Starship. And <laughs> each one of them has, if you can go back, it has like one of those little humans for scale, almost exactly like that, just like a black silhouette human uh-huh. for scale. But it's not any human. Oh. No, no, it's Elon. Uh-huh. And it's not any picture. Of, <laughs> it's not any picture of Elon. At least I think it's Elon. It's it's Elon. You remember that old picture from the El Segundo days where they were having a party and he had one of the um, maracas maracas in his hand. Yes. And he was like, "It's that." So you just see this little you see this little silhouette dot guy with like a maraca in one of his hands. Nice as an image for scale. Nice. I just thought, and there you Excellent. go. A little bit of, uh, yeah, are you I, trying to find it, Ryan? Sounds of Tejano music huh? now, you know, just running through my oh, that's, head. Uh, it's similar. So, it's, yeah, yeah, pretty nice. much. That's that's pretty <laughs> much the human for scale. Yep, and that's the picture on blue. And you know those maracas, believe it or not, they're about the size of a banana. <laughs> so, perfect. <laughs> uh, but that is, so if, again, anyone here who ever gets a tour of SpaceX in the main tour hallway, pay close attention to those tour, the, like, the, they're just kind of like get to know SpaceX sort of thing. Um, just nice. pay close attention to little details in that po- those posters. Each yeah. one of them has that. And nice. it's, it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. yeah. All right. Back to our NASA uh, <laughs> sterilized <laughs> graphic that we have here. Uh, that person, obviously, not dancing. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we? I feel like we should just cut that out and have that as an available key at any moment in the ta- in the show, right? I'm legit going to put that into work while you're doing this. Okay, go for it. Um, and uh, the solar one of the solar arrays had only opened about ninety percent, and uh, the internet, of course, blew up about it. But the engineers did what engineers do, which is work the problem, uh, and they realized that the primary wire to unravel. Uh, the solar panel actually got snagged and there was a secondary wire so they f- did some simulation work and some ground tests over a couple months to see if you could run the secondary and the primary wire at the same time make sure they wouldn't break anything and it would work turns out they applied that salu- they uh, they applied that fix and lo and behold the solar panel is now 99% open which is good so, you know, every little bit of power helps. Uh, they were not able to get the solar panel to latch uh, with that there, unfortunately. But with Does the that fact- matter in space, though? No, it, it really doesn't. And they don't think it's going to affect it, it at any point during the mission. So, uh, so they've just gotten a little bit more power, which is not you know not a bad thing. It's good that they got a little more power um, out of it and... I'm excited about that because Lucy's doing a very cool mission. Going to fly by a lot of Trojan asteroids. Uh, these are asteroids 
they're in a gravitational balance point between the sun and Jupiter uh, in Jupiter's orbit. And we think that most of them have actually been there since the formation of the solar system. So, uh, so we're like, you know, excited to go study the leftovers from the formation of the solar system. So a lot of them are very red too, which tells us that they may be like uh, Arakoth, the, the uh, object that New Horizons flew past uh, back in, oh my gosh, what was it? 2019? It's been so long, I forgot. Um, but yeah, 2019 so, is not that long, yeah. Jared. It's well. Let me tell you, the past three years have been one hell of a decade. That was pre-pandemic. So, <laughs> yeah, it was before, in the before, it was times. before times. So and I, don't, I don't remember much. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, Lucy's fixed, and we're all super excited about making that happen. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited. It's, all these cool things are coming to fruition with our robot. As I continue so. making my little Elon thingy thingy, uh, <laughs> what's your what's your last story? <laughs> what's going on? What did I miss? Oh, you actually showed me working on this. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, did, I didn't like the way that cut out. Uh, so like I, didn't, I didn't feel like it worked really well. I'll talk a little bit about James Webb here because, of course, it's the new hotness at the moment. Um but what is so cool about uh, James Webb is that we're so hot right now. It's so hot. Oh, James Webb, it's so hot right now. Um, <laughs> we're <laughs> you just had to take it up a notch. You know that's kind of is that still accurate? Yes. I'd okay. So. All right. Are now you I know. Me? Thanks. Like, don't don't even question that one. Um, so, <laughs> the uh, with this. Uh, We've, we're a, a month after the main data release of the images, but now the science is starting to flow, you know, like the spice. It's uh, Now that it's flowing, things are starting to get really, really amazing. Um, and uh, we could go to this image, which is that deep field that they took that basically made Hubble look like a, 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 a instant develop camera. Um, poor Hubble. <laughs> I said, I said <laughs> Hubble's become like the before pictures of dental surgery now, but for astronomy. <laughs> so I feel so bad for Hubble these days um, <laughs> but it's still doing good work we love you Hubble I love you uh, so uh, what's so cool about this is that you know when we looked at this initially we already found galaxies that were further away than Hubble ha has seen just in the first image from the James Webb Space Telescope um, and there has been a rash of papers coming out because everybody seems to want to find the galaxy with the biggest amount of redshift. Uh, so basically, the further you look back, or the further away you look in the universe, Parents. the further you're looking back in time, so the faster the acceleration uh, from the expansion of the universe is going to appear. And uh, we call that redshift because your light has been shifted over towards the red spectrum. We measure that with something called Z. Um, so if you ever hear someone say like Z equals three, that means <laughs> the redshift of three, right? Uh, so so we're looking at this object right here, which uh, was isolated that had a redshift of 16.7, which for most people is not really going to mean much. Um, but if you crank out the numbers and things, you'll find out that this galaxy, if it really does end up having a redshift of 16.7, uh, this will be the furthest galaxy away that we have ever seen. And it will have it will have been here. Uh, we're looking at the light from it as it was 235 million years after the Big Bang, which like we have not even come anywhere close to that uh, with any object, frankly. Um, so Again, we're kicking it off. Um, I saw someone threw a paper out there that hasn't been fully peer reviewed yet. It said they had a Z, a redshift of 20, which would be <laughs> like almost 200 million years after the Big Bang. Um, so, ah, oh, man, we're like, we're really cranking it now. Um, so, yeah, uh, Allison, as you're saying, someone someone said that they found uh, a galaxy with a redshift of, of 20, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Again, um, pretty much every paper that's being put out right now saying that they have found the furthest redshift. Uh, there's still a process of peer review that needs to happen with that. Um, but the nice thing is that because James Webb has provided all of these targets, we can now go and verify that uh, and see if Webb is already going up as far back as we expected it to do right out of the gates, which means that we should be able to get even more out of it later on down the line as we figure out, uh, as we really start to get these things together on Webb. So, yeah, it's it's uh it's going good. Even so. more power from Robert. Yeah. 
Uh, could we see the edge of the universe with even more power from Robert? Uh, no, you know, we would have to go to a different wavelength of light in order to be able to do that. Um, and that, that would be a heck of an undertaking um, to make that happen. Um, I'm actually not sure exactly what we would have to do. We'd have to go beyond the infrared. We're probably going to be going into microwaves at that point. Um, there's also a uh, mission called LISA, which is a, a laser interferometer in space. So basically build LIGO and then launch it into space, but do it with three spacecraft and stick these three spacecraft tens to hundreds of millions of kilometers apart from each other and have them precisely detect their distances. And that would, uh, that would, it's been speculated that that would be able to detect ripples of you know maybe within tens of millions of years you know somewhere in that like in that kind of an area so like when the universe is still just an absolute you know menagerie of energy at that point so yeah it would be it would be wild to be able to do that uh, but for making the telescope bigger isn't necessary you know yeah, I, we could we could get close, but there does come a point where where the universe was just so energetic that light couldn't be made uh, <laughs> because it would just break it apart. Um, so yeah, there is a limit, if you will, um, with that there. So uh, yeah, I mean it'd be nice, but you know, so whew, yeah. Nathan wants yeah. to know how do we see back in time to just one year after the Big Bang? I want to see. Um, or is that just basically? If not you've possible? got some Tabasco, <laughs> throw it in your eyes. Um, no, we. Uh, I don't think that would be possible. If I'm going to be honest here, that's. Uh, but also, I hope that me saying that is much like Einstein saying we're never like these are like I have figured out gravitational waves are a thing, but we'll never we'll never be able to detect them. And then we did a hundred mm. years after he said that. So maybe a hundred years from now, someone will dig up this this uh, clip and. Uh, talk about how how I was proven wrong about that there. So, the launch pad also has a question. If yes. We, so if we can see all of this with James Webb, why are we going bigger? Uh well, if you go bigger, you can collect more light, and if you can collect more light, you can gather more data, and if you can gather more data, you can you tend to see things a little bit better. So uh, James Webb, a bit bigger uh, uh, than Hubble. So Hubble is. 2.4 meters in size web is eight meters so because of that you know web is able to collect a significantly more a significantly more amount of light um, and because of that web can look at areas for less time and get an equivalent amount of light that Hubble can you know with that so that speeds up your operations operations on things or in an equivalent amount of time that Hubble can observe an object it can gather significantly more data than it can um so the reason that you just make your telescopes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger bigger is because you just want more and more data because then that allows you to see further like web is doing so it's web is able to see further from a combination of the fact that it's a bigger mirror and then most importantly it's in infrared so so with louvier louvor or however we're pronouncing it nowadays um the need to go bigger uh, is very important. So, uh, so that's why I'm hoping they do instead of the eight meter version of it, I hope they do the 16 meter version of it, which I think you could launch on a starship, which would be very nice. Mm. So maybe Starship can have another uh, uh, customer since I heard they signed their first one this week. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, more bigger is more it's better. Sound terrible. I missed that. Did, so. did that really happen? Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I yeah, missed that sure completely. Did. So, I've been very heads who, down. It's not fair. Who is my customer? Yeah. Who, <laughs> <laughs> who, who's my customer? JSAT. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I think the satellite they're going to launch is called Speedbird 9, something like that. It was a cool yeah, name. It's kind of a cool right. name, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's yeah. kind of awesome. Like, that's it, awesome. They're going to put a 777 yeah. into orbit? It, feel, it feels like a Thunderbird. <laughs> a, <laughs> a British yeah. Airways 777? <laughs> so. Um, yeah. And then um, you may have asked this already, but Allison asked, is there an edge of the universe since it's still expanding? What is it expanding into? Oh, man, that's a great question. That question is much like asking, hey, what color is blue? Yeah. Oh, actually, I have a follow-up question, Jared. <laughs> what color is blue? I don't know. So your guess is as good as anybody else's. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this would actually be kind of cool. Hang on. Hold, 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 hold. I missed. 
What if two James Webb Space Telescopes were linked together like binoculars? Yeah, that would be sick. Uh, because How much distance would you... You need a bunch of distance between them because the universe is one unit of ginormous, right? Yes, it is pretty big. Um, but I just want to say that the idea of flying a flotilla, if you will, of telescopes mm -hmm. um, in specific positions has been thought of before. So there was this really cool mission that JPL was working on in the early aughts called Terrestrial Planet Finder, where they were going to fly five or six optical telescopes uh, a couple couple million kilometers apart from each other and basically use that as a big gigantic interferometer. So if you don't know what an inter interferometer is, um, basically it is a system that uses, uh, you can use smaller telescopes. So you can combine you can use like like we'll use four telescopes that are one meter across and we're going to stick them a hundred meters apart from each other okay and we'll use four of them well what you do is that when you're taking the data in you combine that light data from all of them to a central area and then through some ridiculous supercomputer crunching of that data you can end up pulling out a resolution resolution image of a telescope that would be the distance of those telescopes from each other. So like a 100 meter, hmm. you know, size telescope. Sounds like uh, how we kind of do radio telescopes. Yes, actually that is the, the radio telescopes and ground based infrared, um, uh, like up at Mount Wilson with their Shara array, which was one of the first places they did interferometry. Uh, and like the uh, very large array right there with the, all the dishes lined up like that. Uh, it basically, basically crunching all of that data together um, allows it to have uh, the same resolution as one radio telescope as big as the as big as a circle you would point to get all of those linked together um we've used this for the event horizon telescope so uh, to get the image of Lo M87. loopy literally just said that in the chat yep that's he, he's, he literally said that is how hang on i'll push it green yeah that, um oh, so that was for the m87's black hole and the black hole here in our own uh, galaxy mm. the milky way um although Th that used radio telescopes that were of a distance that basically made a radio telescope the size of Earth. Mm. So we got to go bigger now. So that's why we should put one on the moon. Moon. I so, think, yeah, moon. And then you move yep. to Mars and then eventually the surface of Venus. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That would be sweet. No, no, we're no. not buying that. No takers. No. You, you'd have to co to compensate for the difference in atmospheres for how the radio waves oh, would travel through no data because that radio telescope or anything would only last about two minutes so i don't think it you're Th gonna have to compensate <laughs> for much of anything it's a steep learning curve <laughs> yeah good stuff yeah that's I, that's why it's so exciting with all this stuff right because we could do like what's your wildest dreams and then and then you're like, this is what my wildest dream is. And then they're like, no, nah, we don't have funding for that. Sorry. Andy finally <sighs> caught the live stream. Good job, Andy. Congratulations, Andy. Welcome to the live Fun. stream. Welcome to the live stream. Thanks Howdy. for joining us. Welcome. And we're sorry. Um, and then Scott just said, uh, hold up, hold up. Scott, Scott just said, and I quote, no, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Scott. That, that is almost always appropriate. I mean, usually that's. I mean, if 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 you just say no, Jamie, or yes, Jamie, no will be the correct answer like ninety five percent of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> on oh, you know what? Well, that's fine. Uh, I think on that note, you're you done. I'm spent. Okay, you're spent. Ryan, you were spent a while ago, right? <laughs> Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who helped to make this show possible, uh, specifically the members of tomorrow, uh, starting off with a new stream, stream who has his own stream. custom special slate that he gets in every show for being such a phenomenal supporter, not just of the show. Well, I mean, of the show and everyone on the show. He's also, I think, the number one contributor for sending Ryan to go see. Oh, uh, yeah. Bye, wrong show. Yeah. Uh, hey, I made it onto that other page, too. Mm -hmm. but, but like barely uh, and, and we have different tiers so you know whatever whatever you get out of the show if if it's negative please please don't put that back in but uh, whatever you get out of the show <laughs> if you would, if you wouldn't mind putting that back in it would be greatly appreciated in any way you tracks. can <laughs> right <laughs> anyway any way you can and we have different membership levels that you can support at starting at one dollar a month 
So less than a cup of coffee, effectively. Oh, I love that Elon's still up there. Ah, oh, you took him down. Ooh. Boo you. There we go. I love but, these names like, on here. I, I got to take him down for the next great. one. Why? Oh, all right. Yeah, maybe not. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it highlights April's name, right? Uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, it starts at a dollar. It goes all the I mean, y you can go to the Marl Plaid Pro Plus whatever 33 level i forget what we call it yeah uh which is just a phenomenal the big level. one yeah, and by the way so much if that doesn't work for you uh we we do need more hosts to help out with news because making ryan do it all the time while fun to torture him um <laughs> is, is not <laughs> he just giggles uh is not actually kind of us so i'd love to get some more hosts the, the goal would be it's to have hours of fun it's a <laughs> It's endless fun. I don't know who you're kidding. Like I get, I get years of enjoyment out of it. Um, it would be nice to, like, I, I would love to uh, be able to have a news episode release Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, uh, Dr. Tabitha Scove and Ryan are just solid staples of the show. They've been doing fantastic. I have been slacking. Me too. By, by slacking, I mean working my tail off and have not <laughs> had time to actually make it go. By slacking, I mean slacking. <laughs> so, uh, you know, grabbing more hosts, if that's how you'd like to con contribute. A couple people have pinged me on uh, the Tweety Birds and via email. Uh, you know, if that's something that inter interests you, we'd love to have more hosts. Yep. And uh, the question always is, you know, what does it take to be a host? I mean, we ultimately give you full control. So you would write, um, script, shoot, and edit your episode. We've got some shared media that makes things nice, like the intros and outros and things to like kind of wrap it all together. Uh, but like, yeah, it'd be whatever you're passionate about with regards to space. And the more hosts we can get, I think the better. Um, Cause like if we can get, uh, if we can get eight hosts, that means that you only need to do one every other week. Mm -hmm. That's a very reasonable time frame, I think. Yep. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Uh, that's also a huge ask, I realize. But like, that's where I love to get to, uh, you know, Ryan Jr., Ryan Jr., Jr., Ryan Jr., 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 Ryan Jr., 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 Ryan Jr., Jr., Small Ryan, smaller Ryan. Exactly. Ryan adjacent. Ryan adjacent. So that's kind of what we're looking for on the show. Hopefully y'all had a fun time watching me eat fries in the beginning of the show, scarfing food down. I was drinking. You missed all the really fun. Like, if you're not a member, you missed the really fun stuff of us trying to figure out why Ryan couldn't hear us pre-show. And then what else were we doing? Like, there was a whole bunch of troubleshooting that was happening. Oh, yeah, none of the graphics were working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, no trouble sharting. No. So. Tr <laughs> no, but you got to see the chaos and you yes. get to see the continued chaos as I'm as we go off air. I'm about yes. to go eat cookies. That's good. And so, yeah, absolutely. Cookies are deliciousable. Uh, delish deliciousable? Yeah. You know, it's weird. If I can't move my mouse over here. Um, the only other thing I'll say before we end the show is uh, you may have noticed that I have uh, pur purpley pink hair going on, kind of a nice, really purple hair. Was it's oh, I didn't green. notice. I thought it's it was awesome. really discreet, actually. Thank you very much. I try to make it discreet. It's subtle. It's subtle, right? <laughs> well, the reason <laughs> I have this purple hair is because of a really big, huge announcement coming up. Well, it's, it's actually like pink hair, right? And um, I wanted to preview it here first. There. 